Hi, I'm Cesar Santos, and today we are celebrating 100 vlogs here on YouTube. So stay tuned, we're gonna be drawing, painting, talking about composition, and YouTubing down the river. As an artist, you have to experience everything you do in life from an artistic point of view. As we are flowing down the river, feel the movement of the form, like if you are the tip of the pencil, going around and feeling the movement of it. That's how you need to feel when you're drawing, like if you're just tubing across the forms. I am getting into landscapes because we are living on the road with my studio on wheels, my art move. I woke up really early. I've been working on this pencil drawing. I believe in understanding things before you get to paint. It's all about seeing. It's all about being sensitive as an artist to where the line flows and how you can follow the forms to understand it better and communicate that sensation you felt. Yeah. What grabbed my attention at first was the little house here on top of the hill, beautiful, composed with all the shadows. Nature has the ability to amuse us and we have to know what is it that is calling our attention. This house here, I put it off center to create a big view in front of the house. The mountains going from big to small, kind of pointing at it. The cloud on top also aiming at it creating some intricate shapes and finishing it on top of the house to create also a relationship between the lightest place on my page, which are the white clouds and the reflective man-made material of the roof of the house. The shadows around zigzagging towards the house, just like the bottom of this tree aiming at it. I'm using the elements of design for the composition to give the same sensation I felt when looking at the scene. And it doesn't matter that it has to be this way. That's the beauty of every artist interpreting things differently, having everything else subordinate to the point of view that I want to grab the attention. As an artist, we have to develop a keen sense of vision because it's only when you learn to see from your own perspective that you get to draw from your own point of view. Technique. It's like a factory where the school teaches you how to solve the problems of developing the form. But as an artist, you have to kind of always reinvent it. Of course, those things are necessary and school and a lot of practice is necessary, but always do all of that with the vision in mind that you have particularly as an artist. So every time you encounter a scene that you like, Look for color composition. Look at flowers. What color are they? Are they warmer? Are they pink? Look for color combination in nature and see how you are part of the whole. And when you're painting, you will be able to grab from those experiences and express yourself in a better way, in a particular way. I'll be doing a study of that same scene that I had before me, but a little bit more with a zoom in angle. I'm gonna focus on that little house and see if I can simplify the big shapes of the trees and the ground and a little bit of the sky. But what I'm thinking is to limit myself with the palette. So I'm gonna have a Naples yellow here. My white is gonna be titanium white. If I think of primary colors or colors that will give me a bigger range, I'm thinking of yellow, red, and blue. Instead of red, I'm gonna use burnt sienna as my red. And then I need to make green. I don't wanna be using the green that comes from the tubes. I'm gonna be mixing my own greens, so I'm gonna need a blue in order to mix it with my yellow. This is kind of my palette for today. I'm gonna have a touch of raw umber because I wanna do the underpainting with raw umber and then add some of the different hues on top of it. The light has changed a lot since the drawing I did in the morning. And I don't wanna be working on something that is so different by the time I wanted to develop it and refine it. Otherwise I keep changing the stuff or inventing too much and I didn't want to do that. So it served me as a study. Now I zoomed in in the house 
and all this perspective that I liked from the drawing, I kind of enhanced it here and did a close up of that same scene. So here's uh, the little house and we can obviously see the mountains and the forest behind it kind of aiming towards it. They had beautiful kind of tall grass and flowers on the ground playing, but they, they caught it. But that's fine, I took a couple of pictures. So if I want some details of this area here, which has changed a lot, I can just look at a reference from a photo. Since I want the house to call the attention and I, I need to look for ways to make it call the attention by adding contrast, sharpness, and giving it a anomaly element, meaning giving it something that the rest of the things don't have. The underlying darkness below the house, that's a good way to contrast it because that's like an underlining almost to the importance I'm giving to the house. Also giving some crispy edges along the edges of the roof with light colors that would even be lighter than the sky. And that can also draw the attention there. Mornings are beautiful to paint and afternoons and sunsets are really dramatic. This painting I'm developing in the middle of the day and I kind of like that kind of stable sun reaching the highest point, just lighting everything downward. And there is a beauty to it that is not as dramatic as those extreme moments. There is a way to grab that time of the day by observing how the shadows are working, how light is falling on objects. darken this tree right here a little bit because I don't want the attention to go here. I want that to just be supportive of the house so I don't want it to compete with it. I also decided to put the lightest part of the sky on top of the house to call the attention to the house because it's going to create that tension between the light part on top of the light sky and in between that dark mass creating attention there so our eyes are drawn to that.
I'm gonna do some touches on the sky and I see if I can light it up to call the attention and make an even tone. The sky looks like the lightest thing on my scene, except the reflection of that metal roof. So I need to find that value that is in between, lighter than everything else, but darker than that. The sun has changed a lot of the shadows. Everything is looking a little different. I don't want to find myself chasing that. So I'm going to go for a lunch and maybe later we continue with some sketching or something. The river flows like life. It goes with the current. There are things about the situation with the river that you cannot avoid, that you have to go through it. Sometimes it's smooth and calm. And then there are moments that get really, really rough ah, and cold too. Ah. But that's life. Just stay going with the river and whatever comes your way, embrace it, deal with it, be prepared in case you fall, you have to swim. In case you get out, you have to walk with your bare foot on really uncomfortable rocks. I learned from the Hudson River School that sometimes it's good to do studies of individual elements. To make a landscape painting is to select the beauty of nature as you see it and put it together in a nice harmonious composition. I'm here sitting looking at one particular tree, how I can describe it with the feeling that it gives me. I wanted to give the sense of light and dark, so I'm playing with values but in a very compressed way. I don't want to copy the contrast as it exists over there. I'm trying to give the sense of light falling. It's already evening, so the sun is heading towards its setting point and it's lighting up the tree from an angle. So I'm describing the planes underneath of all this foliage with a darker tone. And as we see masses, I realize that the darkest part is towards the bottom and towards the center. And we can move the pencil in a way that represents all that foliage and the movement of the trees and the action of the branches. And that's gonna give character to the tree because every tree is like a person. They have character. They're moving one way, they're tired, they're excited, they have new leaves coming up, they have been beaten by the weather and the wind. This tree is pretty much in the center of the valley over there and it's kind of proud to be there in the center. So I'm looking at that tree having this kind of power, racing against gravity and embracing the sun. And that's what I'm trying to feel when I draw. If you want to learn my techniques of painting, you can go to my website, cesarsantos.com, and there you can feel that you're with me in the studio as I work, because I will show you the materials I'll use, I show you the way I use them, and how to apply them, and you will see me doing it as I explain all this stuff. So check that out, they're very affordable, and I'm here learning about nature, so I can bring you in my art move with my next landscape adventure. Let's wrap this video up. We're going with the tube, I'm not rowing. We're going with the flow just like drawing. <laughs> oh.